In this lecture, we are going to learn about second type of mongoose middleware, which is called as query middleware. So as the name suggests, query middleware allows us to run functions before or after a certain query is executed. To understand this, let's try to run a function or you can say a middleware before find query runs. So let's scroll down. So currently we are in the movie model file. So if I scroll down here in the previous lecture, we created this pre and post document middlewares. Now we want to create pre and post query middlewares. So again, on the movie schema, we are going to call this pre method. And there, the first argument is the name of the query for which we want to run the middleware. Here, we want to run the middleware for this find query. And then we can specify a function, which is going to be the middleware function. And here I'm using the regular function syntax because Inside this function, we also want to use this keyword. And this function is going to receive this next as its argument. Okay. And let's go ahead and let's first call this next method so that we don't forget it. Now, earlier in case of document middleware, we passed this save as the event. So in that case, it was a document middleware. But here we are passing this find as the event. So since we are passing this find as the event name as the first argument, this middleware function will be a query middleware. And the big difference between a document middleware and a query middleware is that this keyword inside this query middleware, it will point to a query object. It will not point to a document. It will point to a query object. Okay. So in case of a document middleware, this keyword points to the current document. But in the case of a query middleware this keyword points to the current query object which is currently processing okay now let's say our requirement is such that in the database we are also going to store those movies which are not released yet but these movies should only appear in the result if their release date is less than the current date otherwise if the release date of a movie object is in future that means if the release date is greater than the current date and time then the movie should not appear in the result. We don't want to display it to the users. So currently all the movies which we have in our database. So here I am in the get all movies API. So if I click on the send button, all the movie objects which we have in our database, they all have a release date, which is less than the current date. So today's date is 25th of March, 2023. So all the movie objects which we have in our database, they have the release date less than the current date. So the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to create a movie object where the release date is going to be in future. And I'm going to call this movie as maybe sample movie. Okay. And let's say this movie is going to be released in 2023, but it is going to be released in October, maybe 21st, 2023. Okay. So I have simply changed the release date here and this date is in future. Now, when we create this movie object, so let me go ahead and create this movie object by clicking on the send button. So that movie object has been created. Okay. And this movie object has a release date in future. So when I go ahead and when I make a get request to get all the movies in the result there, I don't want to see that movie object, this sample movie object in the result. Currently we have the sample movie object in the result. But we don't want to show this to the user because its release date is in future. This movie has not been released yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's implement the logic for this. So what we are going to do is here, when we are calling this API, it is basically going to call this get all movies API. And in the get all movies API, we are passing this query movie.find. So when we are calling this find method on this movie model, it is going to find all the documents from the movies collection and it is going to return us, right? So it is basically this query, which is going to return us all the movie objects. And here you see the query name is find. So before this query will run, this middleware will be executed because here we want to execute this middleware on find query. Okay. So before this query will run, before this query, this middleware will be executed. And inside this middleware function, we will have access to this query, the query returned by this movie.find method. And we will have access to this using this keyword. 
So here I can say this dot. So basically this keyword here, it is going to point to the query object returned by movie.find. And since it is going to return a query object, this, this keyword is going to store a query object. We can chain another query methods provided by mongoose on this keyword. So here also we can say this dot find. Okay. Now, what do we want to find? What do we want to return in the result? Basically, here we want to return those documents in the result where the release date, it is less than or equal to the current date. So here I'm going to use an operator less than or equal to. Okay. And for the current date, I will say date dot now. So what we want is we want to return only those movie objects in the result where the release date is less than or equal to the current date, current date and time. Okay, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go back to Postman. And there, now when I click on this send button, when I make a get request to get all movies in the response, we should not see this sample movie in the result. Because here for the sample movie, the release date is in future. It is greater than the current date. Okay, so let me go ahead and let me make a request here. And now you will notice that we don't see sample movie in the result. If I scroll down, you will not see the sample movie anywhere in the result. Okay. So this middleware, which we have defined here on this find query, it is working as expected. But here we have a problem. And the problem is if I go back to Postman and here I have opened this get movie by ID. Okay. So basically, when we try to query this sample movie, let me go to Compass. Let me refresh this database here, this collection. So if I scroll down, here we have this sample movie created. So if we try to access this sample movie document by using its ID, using this get movie by ID API, okay, here we are able to access this movie object. But here also, we don't want to access this movie object. We don't want to show this movie object, this movie document to the users. So this is happening because here for this get movie by ID API, we are basically using this get movie method, this route handler function. And inside this route handler function, if you see, we are using movie by ID method. And this movie by ID method behind the scenes uses find one method. So this find one method is different from this find method. And that's why when we are calling this find one method, this logic is not applied on that query. Now to solve this problem, what we can do is we can either copy this code from here and for the query name, instead of find, we can pass find one. So the same middleware function will execute for find one and find because their definition is same. But instead of doing it like this, what we can do is, let's say we want to run this middleware function for all the query methods, which starts with find. For example, we want to execute this middleware function for find, find one, find by ID and update, find by ID and delete, etc. So all the query methods, which starts with find, for all those query methods, we want to execute this middleware function. For that, what we are going to do is we are going to use regular expressions. So here I will use two slashes and inside that we can specify the string with which the query name should start. So here basically any query name which starts with find any query method whose name starts with find. We want to execute this middleware function on that. Okay. Let me save the changes here. Let's go back to Postman. And now when I click on the send button, that means when I make a get request to get a movie object by its ID, we should not get this sample movie in the result because now this release year here is greater than the current date and time. And now this logic, you know, this middleware will execute for any query method which starts with find. So it is also going to execute for find by ID because behind the scenes it uses this find one method. Let's actually see that. So now when I click on the send button, we should not see any movie object in the result as you can see. Okay. Now let me also quickly show you the documentation of mongoose. So here we are 
in the documentation for mongoose and here i want to show you about the middleware so here i will click on this middleware link and here you, you can learn more about mongoose middlewares so in the last lecture we learned about document middlewares so here you can see the documentation for document middlewares and this document middleware can be applied on save we can apply it on remove we can apply it on update one and delete one we can apply it on init and validate okay in the same way here we have query middleware and we can apply this query middleware on any one of these query methods for example count count documents delete many delete one find find one find one and delete find one and remove etc okay all right let's go back to vs code again and let's quickly also implement a post middleware for find so i'll copy this code i'll paste it here now we want to create a post middleware so on the movie schema we can call this post method and here the event is going to be same so basically we want to apply this post on all the query methods which starts with find now in case of a post middleware what happens is this middleware function receives two arguments the second argument is next but the first argument is the list of documents which that find query method is going to return for example when the query method is find it is going to return all the documents right so all those documents will be assigned to the first argument of this middleware function let's call it docs so in case of find method since the find method is going to return all the documents in the result this docs will be assigned with the list of those documents but in case of find one it is going to return only one document in the result so this docs will be assigned with that one document okay now here what we want to do is inside this post middleware is once the find method or find one it has fetched the documents from the collection we want to calculate the time it took to fetch those documents and to do that what we are going to do is inside this pre method inside this pre middleware i am going to create a property on this so basically this is pointing to the current query object on that i want to create a property called start time and here i will set it to date dot now basically the current date and time and keep in mind that this middleware function will be executed before the find method has started fetching the documents and this post middleware basically this middleware function will be executed after the find method has completely fetched all the documents okay so in here we are creating a start time property on the query object on the current query object and here let me go ahead and let me create another property on the query object i will call it in time okay and again i will assign it with current date and time so i will say date dot now and now what i want is i want to log the time which the query method basically the find method or the find one method it has took to fetch the documents from the collection so for that i'm going to use this code here so i'll paste it here and here let me go ahead and let me create this content variable and here i'm going to use backticks and there let's say query took and then let me use the template literal syntax and here let's say this dot in time minus this dot start time and this time will be in milliseconds okay so query took maybe some time in milliseconds to fetch the documents so this is what i want to log in this log.txt file currently we have these three log messages now let me go ahead and let me save this let's go to postman and here let's go ahead and let's click on this send button basically let's make a get request to get all the movies in the response okay now if i go back to visual studio and if we go to this log.txt there we should have a log message logged so query took 249 milliseconds to fetch the documents so basically when we made a get request to this api it basically calls the find query method right here it is calling this movie dot find so when this query object runs and once it has fetched all the documents from the collection it is going to execute this middleware function and in there we are logging the time it took to fetch all the documents into log.txt file this is all from this lecture and this is all about
query middleware of Mongoose. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.